Hey, kid. Hey. Look, I made a spoon hat. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of TV that moved me the way iCarly did. Its humor, directed towards an audience of children, was by no means conventional. It was written in a style that wasn't afraid to fall flat on its face. iCarly reveled in its creative risk. Sometimes, I'd laugh at the jokes they'd pull not just because they were funny, but I was astounded at the fact that they actually went through with them. And his comedy was passed rightly through the characters. The writers wrote his humor to match each individual of the show. Sam was harsh and callous. Freddy was embarrassing and self-deprecating. But I believe the best quirks of iCarly were the characters who didn't push a sense of negativity on oneself or others, but who made me laugh through actions of absurdity. That's why Spencer was always my favorite character. Next to Gibby, he made me chuckle in the most unexpected ways. His humor was rarely ever achieved by being hard on anyone else. It was a nice feeling to laugh at the expense of no one. Spencer did that all the time. But the few times Spencer lacked that magic was when we saw another side of him. A part of Spencer that wasn't all good. A Spencer consumed by compulsion. San Cheeto. <laughs> there are two episodes I'm talking about. The first is when Spencer finds an old arcade game called Pack Rat in the dumpster. He fixes it up and plays for hours on end, completely disregarding his deadline to finish his sculpture for a client. If this wasn't enough of a reason already, his client also happens to hold a very high status among the Seattle art community. The wait is there. There is an opportunity for Spencer to take the next step in his art career. But nothing can take Spencer's hands off the joysticks, not even his own sister. But Spencer will get through it, he'll manage his time like he says, and he'll finish that dog sculpture way before the deadline on Sunday. If there was any indication of a pattern in Spencer's questionable behavior, it would come about a season later. In the episode I Get Pranky, Carly needs help performing a prank after being teased by Sam and Freddy because she's never pranked anyone before. After Spencer profusely turns down a chance to help his sister, Carly convinces him to pull one more prank. This launches Spencer into a renegade of jokes taken too far. Pranks that end up causing more damage than fun. On the high of hilarity, Spencer fails to see his collateral damage. This behavior is frightening to everyone around Spencer, most importantly his little sister. But this habit is by no means unfamiliar. With both the pack rat game and the relentless pranks, Spencer's personality seems to endorse obsessiveness. No matter how hard one tries to snap him out of his mayhem, he takes his fixations to the next level, with no consideration to even his well-being. This is apathy. In these moments, nothing matters to Spencer, not himself or even Carly, who he's devoted his whole life to keeping safe. Spencer can't stop playing pack rat until Carly tells him that it's already Sunday, and he is nowhere close to finishing the sculpture. Spencer's client, heavily outraged, forces Spencer to see his faults and bring him back to reality. And what's more concerning is his conscious decision to strike down his responsibility even after getting lucky enough to be given just a warning. When given a second chance to finish the sculpture by the end of the week, Spencer only sees it as a chance for more pack rat. And he's pushed even further when he is encouraged to beat the high score of the number one player in the world, Sasha Stryker. Come on, Spencer will get sick of the game after a while. No way. This isn't about him loving pack rat. It's this, this crazy competitive thing with him. There is a veil unmasked here, one that brings clarity behind Spencer and his actions. There is an insatiable need to be at the top and to stop at nothing to get to that point. I think Spencer can succeed in art without this mindset because art is less of a race and more of a passion. And Spencer is the only one that needs to like his work for him to be content. But in the regulated world of practical jokes and high scores, there is only one best, one winner, and Spencer won't let it be anyone other than him. What sends this home is just how far things are taken for Spencer to take a step back and see his errors. In the Pack Rat episode, Spencer only really acknowledges his problem. He never really faces it. He goes through all the way, managing to beat Sasha's renowned high score in time to finish his dog sculpture for his client. Sure, he wins the day, but it's a very dull recognition towards his issues that are underneath his victory. When Spencer can't stop pranking, He's visited by his old classmates he traumatized back in school with his tricks. When Spencer still can't seem to break his habits, he's beaten into compliance by the people in his life who have never forgiven him for his actions. 
Spencer never takes the final step to fix his issues. He either commits or is pushed into a position where he doesn't have a choice. This really brings light to Spencer's addictive personality and his recklessness when he is approached with the challenge he thinks he has the skill to beat. When in over his head, he is a pit of irresponsibility and cannot be counted on when he is needed the most. So I want to ask myself the same question again. Is this the Spencer I know and love? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think one of iCarly's greatest achievements was Spencer Shea. He brought this warmth to the screen, and I'm still laughing at the jokes he cracks in almost every episode. Because Spencer didn't push, he gave. While characters are written to be liked, there needs to be a counterweight inside them. A devil on a shoulder written not only to push a conflict, but to invoke us to say, hey, I relate to this character because they are real, just like me. I'm not saying Spencer should have ever faced his problems and gotten help. In fact, I'm saying the opposite. The dismissal of our flaws and putting our handicaps on the back burner is incredibly human, but they are always there. And iCarly made Spencer real by implementing those same toxic qualities to his nature and then allowing Spencer to live with them. And yes, even the most comical shows take this into account, even iCarly. It was surrounded by success because of its intrepid style, but additionally because the showrunners knew the principle of conflict, of motivation, and how the greatest TV is just reflections of the lives sitting in front of that TV. And so Spencer, he was all that. Among being a creative artist and a caring brother, he was a human being. And we all know what it means to be human. That means taking a step back and looking at the good and the bad. But what makes a character real is the balance of both. Because when we are young and dumb, looking at the screen for guidance or advice, we need to be reminded that even our idols have flaws. So that when we relate to those we look up to, we can look at ourselves and say, hey, I'm okay too. Hey, it's been a while. I hope you're doing all right, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. This video was a lot of fun to make, and it brought me back to my childhood days. I hope it does the same for you. I've been less active on here because a lot of things are changing. I just moved out and I'm starting college in a few weeks. But don't worry, the videos are on their way. Another reason things have slowed down is because I've been working on this documentary and my friend for the better part of a year, and it's almost done. So I can't wait to get that out to you guys. You can check out the trailer right now. Thanks for being a friend, and support my Patreon if you'd like. You get cool perks, and don't forget to breathe.